Ready or not, it's time for another adventure in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Today, our mission is to tackle the Lightning Temple in Gerudo Desert, quick guide style. Thanks a bunch for tuning in, I'm Kat and if you're a repeat offender here, welcome back to the channel. Now if you're a first timer, drop everything and smash that like and subscribe button. Alright boys and girls, strap yourselves in and let's crash this party. Since this is a quick guide, let's get straight to the point. I've pre-posted the shrines that you need to complete to streamline your journey, and you can find the links below. I highly recommend tackling these shrines as part of the Riju of Gerudo Town main quest because it involves some backtracking. One final tip for the boss fight, make sure to grab at least two multi-shot Lionel bows. And don't worry, you don't need to defeat two Lionels right now. There are five chests scattered throughout Hyrule containing Lionel bows. One chest, which actually has a mighty Lionel bow, which you can find at Cape Kales, northeast of Laurelin Village. Additionally, there are two Lionel Bows located close to each other. One is west of Rebella Wetland Skyview Tower at the northeast base of Mount Floria, in the middle of an army camp. The other is just north of this location in an army camp west of Ockel's Naval. Okay, last tip, for real this time. Make sure to bring plenty of bomb flowers for safety, and make sure that you have some splash fruit or choo-choo jelly on hand. Now that we're all set, let's dive into the Gerudo Town Underground Shelter. To get here, we need to reach the Karakara Bazaar. Glide directly from the Gerudo Canyon Skyview Tower. Once you arrive, I suggest building a flying device to navigate through the sand shroud. Alternatively, you can use the wind pocket updrafts, but visibility will be poor and your map will be next to useless. Gerudo Town has been beset by an ominous sand shroud, forcing the people there to retreat to an underground shelter. But before we dive in, I highly recommend getting the Desert Vo set and the sand boots from the secret shop. I've linked a detailed video below on how to obtain these, but here's a quick rundown since it's on the way-ish anyway. Behind the shops, you'll find an opening you can jump into. Turn around and face the tunnel and break the rocks to your left. Continue along the path, breaking any rocks in your way until you reach an area with lots of gray stone. Ascend from this spot, and you'll find yourself inside the shop. After you've made your purchases, let's go out the front door and back around so that we can jump back down into the hole behind the shops. But, instead of turning left where we broke the rocks, head straight until you reach a dead end with a small hole in the ceiling and a jar hanging from it. Let's ascend from there, and you'll find yourself inside the shelter, and you'll almost be apprehended by the police. Just kidding, that's Bulliara. We go way back. She'll make sure everyone knows it's fine for you to be here. Boliara also lets you know that Lady Riju is at home right now and that she's training in the ruins to the north. So that's where we need to go next, and you can spot the ruins on your map. Ascend from here and head to the ruins to the north. Right outside of town, you'll find a wind pocket that can help you glide over there more quickly. When you find Riju, she's practicing her lightning strikes but struggling to hit her targets. She asks Link for help with her training, thinking that she can use arrows to guide her lightning. So go ahead and fire an arrow at the dummy, but only after her yellow energy covers it. She'll then explain that if you shoot the ground in front of multiple enemies, they'll all be affected. So instead of aiming for the dummies, aim for the rock between the three dummies. As Lady Riju starts to get the hang of it, she hears the voices of her ancestors. Just then, she's interrupted with news that a swarm of Gibdus is attacking Karakara Bazaar. Naturally, that's our next destination. Boliara is already en route. Fast travel to the Mayatat Shrine. Once you arrive, you'll encounter Gibdus for the first time. These grotesque monsters emerged with the Sand Shroud. They're tough and resistant to regular physical attacks, but are vulnerable to elemental damage like lightning. Apply what you just learned and harness Riju's lightning and take down the Gibdus. To stop more from appearing, you'll need to destroy their hive. Shoot the hive when it's glowing pink. This is when it's releasing Gibdos and is vulnerable. Otherwise, it's immune to attacks. So just go around until you get all of the Gibdos. Shortly after you defeat the monsters, Zelda appears in the distance, accompanied by strange tornadoes surrounding Gerudo Town. She heads towards the town but quickly disappears from view. Fast travel to the Suryanog Shrine and rejoin Riju and the others back at Gerudo Town. Jump down from the shrine and you'll find Lady Riju and Buliara outside the palace. Riju explains that there are three Gibdu hives, one outside each gate, and they're believed to have been brought in by those strange tornadoes. Head inside the throne room and talk to Riju again to start planning your battle strategy. Next, speak with Buliara and the soldiers to organize their defenses. Buliara will direct you to Captain Teak in the yard to help decide the best way to deploy forces. She'll also mention Pata in the courtyard who is in charge of materials. Let's check in with Pata first to see what's available. 
Patter believes that she can set up a barricade at any of the three gates. From the palace, the north gate is straight ahead, the west gate is to the left, and the east gate is to the right. I'm having her place the barricade at the north gate to block that path. Before you leave, make sure you gather all the materials, Zonai capsules, and check against the wall near the stairs for some weapons and chests. Once you've collected everything, head back inside and go to the yard to speak to Captain Teak. Captain Teak needs help deciding which troops to send to each gate. First, let's assign the spear troops to the east gate. Next, send the sword troops to the west gate. Finally, deploy the cannoneer at the north gate. This is why I had Pata place the barricade there. Now, head back inside the throne room and inform Lady Riju that all preparations are in place. Everyone comes outside the palace, and just as Riju's about to speak, she's interrupted by the rumble of Gibdu hives releasing Gibdus. It's time to get to work. <laughs> head to the north gate first. Help take out the Gibdus and make sure to stick around and target the hive when it's glowing. If you don't, more Gibdus will keep coming. Riju's energy needs to reach the hive when you shoot it for maximum effects. Next, head to the remaining gates. It doesn't matter which one you choose first, just be sure to quickly destroy the hive and any monsters that have spawned. Keep using Riju's lightning power effectively at each gate. Remember, the troops are also there to assist, but you need to act quickly. If any Gibdus get inside and attack Riju, and she loses, you lose as well. Once you've cleared a gate, move on to the next one. After taking out the last hive and any remaining monsters, rendezvous back in the throne room. As Riju reflects on the connection between the hives, the sand shroud, and the mysterious voice from earlier, she remembers something important and asks Link to come down to the mural in the underground shelter. The quickest route is through the secret entrance behind the throne and under the seal statue. Once you land, turn around to find the mural Riju mentioned. Approach her, and she will explain the mural's origins and its message. The mural reads, Standing back to back with the throne, witness red pillars across a vast sea. Unite the pillars of light to reveal the lightning stone and open the way. For convenience, fast travel back to the Soryo Tanag Shrine. Turn around and head behind the shrine. This position mirrors being back to back with the throne. You'll see red pillars across the sand sea. Those are the ones we need to reach. You can glide using Tulin's wind gust or build a flying machine to reach each pillar. Aim to land on the pillar. At floor level of this pillar, you'll find bombable rocks blocking a light source. Shoot a bomb arrow to reveal the light. Then ascend to the top to use the height advantage for reaching the next pillar. Follow the light to make your way to the next pillar. You'll find updrafts along the way to help speed things up and improve visibility. As you approach the pillar, you'll land on a rock. The pillar is just on the other side. Jump down and glide across to land on said pillar, then ascend to the top. Once there, glide down to the shorter pillar with a crank on top. Attach a fan to the crank to get it spinning. Then quickly glide back to the first pillar before it rises too high. If you're too late, you'll need to move to the last pillar from the ground, which is fine. There are fewer wind pockets and you'll need to complete part of the journey on foot no matter which way you go. Catch a lift from the wind pocket next to the last pillar. Stand on the bottom section and ascend to the very top. You can attach a fan here like before to get it spinning, or use the materials from below to build your way up, whichever you prefer. Once all three pillars are lit, a triangle will be revealed with the lightning stone right in the center. Let's head on over there. When you arrive at the lightning stone, you'll see Zelda standing in front of it, doing Zelda things. Then, suddenly and quite magically, Riju shows up and joins the scene. As always, Zelda vanishes once again. Riju begins piecing things together, but we already know the plan. Strike the lightning stone with lightning. And just a quick heads up, due to some technical difficulties, Link had to have a wardrobe change, but no time to dwell on that now. The temple is rising straight out of the sand. Alright, to start this party, we need to activate Riju's lightning. First, shoot the hive sack in front of the temple. Meet the Queen Gibdu. She is the one who is responsible for the Sand Shroud and all the monsters that came with it. We'll only need to damage her partially. To start, activate Riju's Lightning. The Queen is impervious to non-elemental attacks, so ensure that Riju's energy reaches the Queen before shooting. While the Queen's vulnerable, indicated by her turning white, shoot her with something strong attached to your bow like the Gibdu bones you collected on the way here. This will help you finish the fight quickly, and yes, 
I know it's a bit poetic to use her own monster's bones against her, but that's what she gets for creating a sand trout. Once you have reached said point, the queen retreats into the pyramid. And now you have two choices, either ignore the two hives outside or attack them for more Gibdu bones. If you choose to leave them alone, be cautious inside because they can come in here and they can smell you. Probably. Next, shoot the pink sack to gain entry to the first floor of the lightning temple. There is a chest in the sand pile if you're interested, but you will need the Korak Frond Guster on the wall. Take it and go to the sand pile in the middle of the room and use it to blow away the sand, revealing a, a dun, 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 floor switch. Stepping on that bad boy opens the door, allowing us to venture further into the temple. You might also want to grab and light this torch as it gets dark for a bit. Continue along the path until you reach a dead end with a broken wall. You can explore this area if you wish, but for efficiency, turn right. Riju cannot advance any further, so you'll need to wait for the fire to shut off briefly to get through, and then do it for the second set of fire. On the other side, you will find a floor switch that deactivates the flamethrowers and unlocks the gate. Hey, the flames have gone out. Now we can move ahead. This allows Riju to pass. Moving forward, you'll enter a room with giant fireballs rolling into a pit. To prevent them from breaking, throw splash fruit or choo-choo jelly at them to cool them down. Cool off two fireballs as there's only two allowed out at a time. With two cooled fireballs in the pit, you can safely follow the hallway they rolled from. Step on the floor switch to close the gate and open the path forward. Follow the hall until you reach a room with a single hive. Here, you can collect more Gibdu bones and some Gerudo weapons. Alternatively, proceed through the doorway leading into the room of hopeful light. There's a construct to your left. Eliminate it first. Then, use your ultra hand to grab the mirror from the sand pile and position it to face the wall switch. Hold the mirror up until the wall switch turns green, which will open the gate. Continue down the hall until you reach the room of ascension. This is where we actually begin. Examine the dragon ring and it will start to lift the platform on which you stand. But much like your phone, the batteries are dead. We need to use Reju's powers to recharge the four batteries. The first battery is directly ahead. You'll see a broken wall in the corner. Move the pot and the bricks to clear the way. Then enter the room and line yourself up, activate Reju's lightning and shoot the battery. Once it's charged, head back to the room of ascension. All right, three left. Head to the opposite corner of the ascension room. There, move the debris blocking a wind pocket on the floor. Use the updraft to glide to the doorway glowing orange, which leads to the fourth floor. I'll leave that area to you. Inside, you'll find a room with a soldier construct. Defeat it, then take note of the spinning wheels inside the wall. Since they aren't full circles, use Recall to align them and create an opening. On the other side, move the two bricks in the wall to let the light through. When the light hits the switch, a statue will move, allowing you to glide back into the ascension room. Glide over to the wind pocket again and use it to reach the fourth floor again, where the light will hit another switch. Then, when that turns green, another statue will move, revealing a floor switch. This will shift the statue into the wall. In this room, grab the bricks to your right and place them between the spiked walls to stop them from closing completely. Once past the spiked walls, you'll find a floor switch that stops the spikes from moving, allowing Riju to get through. Turn around, grab the brick, and stand it up vertically in the hall where the spikes come down. Keep it to the side so light can pass through. But be cautious of the two soldier constructs as you enter the room of light and shade. After those constructs are defeated, find the hole in the ground and fall into it. Below there is a rotating wall with a switch underneath. Grab a stake and your A1 sauce and aim the pointed end at the wall next to the switch. As an opening appears, try to shove the stake into the wall and block the rotating wall from moving. Once you've done that, grab the mirror from the sand pile and hold it up to the switch until it turns green. Then ascend to the top. There's another mirror in a sand pile. Take it and place it on the lattice floor. 
facing out of the room. The light will reach another switch, opening the gate to the next battery. Move forward towards the switch. The second battery is right behind it. Now activate Reju's power and shoot the battery. Then head back the way you came. Two more left, Link. Let's hurry. Following the power line through the spiked walls and into the ascension room. The wind pocket is immediately to your right. Jump into it and land on the ledge above to reach the fifth floor. You'll encounter a soldier construct here. Defeat it to proceed. After, notice a gap in the wall. Climb up and enter the room of natural light. In this room, grab the brick to your right and place it vertically inside the light beam. In the cubby hole in the wall, you'll find a mirror. Take that mirror and place it on top of the brick facing the opening. This will allow the light to pass through the gap you climbed through. Just outside, you'll see a mirrored statue on rails. Use Ultra Hand to pull it all the way back until its mirror catches the light. Next, move forward and to the left to where the light landed and grab the mirror statue there. Pull it all the way back so its mirror redirects the light to a switch on the second floor, which will move another statue out of the way. Glide down to that floor switch and step on it to move the statue into the wall. Now before you enter the room of offered light, get ready for a battle. As soon as you enter the room, you'll spot a hive. Activate Reju's lightning to boot. The hive will become active as soon as you move forward. After that, be prepared to defeat a few remaining Gifdus and a couple soldier constructs. Additionally, watch out for the two armed constructs on hover stones in the back of the room. They'll be shooting at you throughout the battle. I recommend taking care of them early on if you can. Once all the enemies are defeated, you'll need to build a contraption. Start by grabbing a balloon and attaching it to the platform on the floor. There's also a torch on the wall and a mirror in the sand pile. Assemble these so that the mirror faces the switch. Light the balloon to make it float up and direct the light to the switch, which will open the gate and reveal the third battery. Activate Reju's lightning and shoot that battery. Okay, only one more battery to go. Then retrace your steps following the power line back. Glide over to the wind pocket and let it carry you back to the statue with the originating light. Pull the statue out of the light and then move counterclockwise to the next statue and push it forward all the way. Proceed to the next statue, which is blocked by a pile of sand. Use your Korok Frond Guster to clear the sand. Then, pull the statue forward into the light. Finally, continue counterclockwise to the last statue and pull it into the light. The light should now be aimed at a switch statue, however, this switch statue is on the 6th floor and there's no direct way to reach it. Jump into the wind pocket one last time and let it carry you forward. Land near the mirror statues below the switch you just activated and look up. Ascend where you see statues rather than a blank wall. There should be a ledge of brick. Ascend from there and then ascend again onto the next level and you should pop up in front of the switch statue. Now, just step on the floor switch and move that statue into the wall. Go all the way forward and look down to see the crossfire. Jump down and carefully navigate through the fire to reach the Room of Light and Flame. Next to the gate, step on the floor switch to allow Riju entry. Be prepared for a fight, as there are two soldier constructs waiting for you. Once you've defeated them both, turn around to find the fourth battery. Shoot this battery to charge it. All right, we've charged all of the batteries with lightning. That should wake up the mechanism in the center. Let's go, Link. Head back to the ascension room and get ready to activate the dragon ring. This will lift the platform all the way up to the seventh floor into the room of glorious light. It's time for the final showdown with the Queen Gibdu. If you have any food or elixirs with buffs, now is the time to use them. 
I'm using an attack buff, but I recommend using a defense buff because one hit from this little lady will deplete your health pretty quick if she spits on you. Okay, let's do this. First, make sure Riju's energy has reached the pink hive sack. Shoot that thing and disturb the queen's nap. This enrages her. If Riju is immediately uncooperative, shoot the queen with your Lionel bow with bomb arrows. You'll need to stun her twice before you can get in some solid hits with your sword. Keep alternating between bomb arrows and Riju's lightning to keep her stunned and vulnerable until she reaches half health. Now she's pretty upset. So upset, in fact, that she starts spewing Gibdus from the hives. I know this is overwhelming, but right now we can just mostly focus on taking out the four hives. But watch out for her stream of deadly spit. You're not safe from it. But as long as you keep moving, you'll manage just fine. Above each hive is a light. Glorious light. Gibdus don't much fancy the light, so think of it as your home base. The Gibdus and flying Gibdus can't go into the light. They will, and they will die because of it. Don't waste your time killing them as they don't leave any drops when defeated. All you can really do is focus on taking out these hives while dodging the queen and all of her weird freak monsters. Once all four hives are destroyed, hang out in the light until the remaining Gibdus are taken care of. Then, you can turn your attention back to the queen. It'll be just like before she even activated the hives. If you can, attach a bomb flower to your shield to trigger some bullet time. But, be wary of the tornadoes, they'll mess you up if you're not careful. After you've defeated the Queen Gibdu, you get your heart container along with the story of Gerudo's involvement of the Great Imprisoning War and the vow of the sages to fight along the Swordsman Link and defeat the Demon King once and for all. Then you get to watch as Gerudo Town clears up and everyone comes back to the surface. You did good, kid. After that, you're taken back to the throne room where Riju thanks you but says you're on your own when it comes to Zelda. She's super busy now that things have settled down. You'll receive your vow of Riju, and Boliara suggests you might want to share what you've learned at the Lookout Landing. If you head there and you want to chat with Pyrrha, you'll find her at the top near the telescope. But that's all I'll say for now. See you in the next quick guide. And that's all she wrote. If you found this walkthrough helpful, don't be shy. Give that like button a little tap, hit subscribe for more gaming goodness, and spread the word to your fellow adventurers. Got any questions or thoughts? Drop them in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. Until next time, this is KK Jinx, over and out.